Puppies. Let's talk about puppies. People. So we talked about puppies and uh, the potential for silting up. So just going in with, with a low bony material uh, food to start with is, is, is really important, okay? The other thing with puppies that vets and, and the general public will be really worried about is the calcium phosphorus ratio, okay? The bony, the, 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 the micronutrient composition of the food, okay? And I find that my vets and vet nurses are very similar in that they, they don't really know an awful lot about nutrition, but they do know that the calcium phosphorus ratio has to be correct, okay? But I don't think that is, that is actually the case because there are now, after 25 years of raw food, we have millions around the world of puppies who've been raised on raw food where the calcium phosphorus ratio wasn't exactly 1.1. 1.2. That is the, you know, officially the, 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 the correct ratio. But with raw foods, it's quite difficult to get that. And yet, these puppies are growing arguably better than the kibble-fed puppies, okay? What I find with, with kibble-fed puppies, they tend to grow very quickly, which can cause problems with hip dysplasia. And there's some work from the University of Helsinki, uh, Anna, uh, and her group at the dog risk group have shown that feeding raw food to puppies uh, you get a reduced incidence of hip dysplasia in those raw fed puppies okay so this goes to suggest that that a uh, a responsibly fed uh, quality raw food can supply calcium and phosphorus and uh, cartilage elements and all these things in completely the right um, ratio such that the individual can grow properly because we are not feeding machines we are feeding puppies who if they need more calcium their bodies will 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 uh, absorb more calcium if they need less their bodies will absorb less calcium yeah we are feeding a, we are feeding a creature which can uh, sense its own environment and can change its uh, relationship with the external environment that is within its gut. Okay, yeah? You eat bony material which, has, which was raised in the forest, then goes into your gut and you can say, right, today I need a little bit more calcium and you absorb more calcium. Okay, so it means that the, the, the range that you can feed a puppy is actually really quite large. It's not just 1.1, 1.2 to 1. Okay, happy days. It means that unless you feel, feed ridiculous food, like the people like Freeman and Chandler in their paper, they quote, uh, I think it was St. Bernard that was raised on pure beef with no minerals whatsoever i.e. this is a low calcium diet and the, the puppy by the time it was eight months old had bone disease well of course it would it's you're you're, you're feeding yeah, unintelligently uh, a dog on a diet that is completely uh, a million miles away from being complete and balanced to uh, being balanced for that animal to be able to sort themselves out to be able to uh, produce to produce um, good quality bone so for me feeding puppies is very easy the as long as you provide plenty of bony material either as a uh, within the mints or as recreational bones they sort themselves out we actually have we uh, um, just maybe uh, three months ago we got a new puppy and she is self-regulating with her diet. We are providing a range of complete and balanced foods. And if one day she decides not to eat, she doesn't eat. If the next day she decides to eat half her body weight in food, then that's what she does. And she's producing 
Guys, she is producing the most amazing poos. These are poos. Uh, <laughs> I do, I do a, a stool score. Yeah, stool is the posh way of saying poo, okay? Uh, and 10 is a perfect poo. And I say it's like a cigar, okay? And naught is like soup, okay? And, and uh, a 5 out of 10 is like a blancmange, okay? So uh, it means that if I'm speaking to, to my clients, I'll say, what was the poo like last week? And they'll go, oh, it was a 3 out of 10. And what is it this week? Oh, it's a 7 out of 10. I'll go, great, look at that. We've got a you know, 5 point difference. This is great. Continue feeding the raw food and we'll soon be at 10 out of 10. But Bluebell, and I'll show you some pictures later, she is actually doing poos and you can see sunlight under the poos. They're so perfect and firm and lovely that <laughs> I get excited about these things, okay? <laughs> you can actually see sunlight below them, okay? There's no, there's no squidge factor whatsoever. They are absolutely beautiful. Okay, bear with me. Okay, so some people say to me, why? Why are we feeding raw at all? Why, why go to the trouble? Why, go to, why fight? Why not just go down to the supermarket and pick up a bag of something and chuck it at the dog every day? You know? Why bother? And for me, that's, it's a fantastic question. And if you think about it, it is, it is, it is showing a complete lack of appreciation of what we're actually talking about. What have dogs been eating for the last million years? Okay, Sh the, that should be the question. The answer is raw food, okay? How long have they been eating processed food? I.e., answer is ever since James Spratt got off the boat, I think it was at Liverpool, and he saw the dogs eating ship's biscuits. Yeah, he was an American. I think he was a Brit, went to America, came back, saw the dogs eating ship's biscuits. It is in about 1886 or so. And he thought, oh, there'll be money in there. And so he made this food called meat febrine, which is actually, <laughs> which is actually incorrect because there was no meat in the meat febrine. He used blood as the protein. Okay, so for me, that is where the, the, uh, the disinformation that we have been fed from the complete, from, from, from the kibble and the raw, and, and, the, and the, uh, the big corporations, the food corporations, that's where it all started, yeah? James Spratt incorrectly described his meat febrine and ever since then, they, for me, in my opinion, have been giving us information which doesn't satisfy me, okay? They are saying kibble is the best way to feed, this is scientifically formulated, this has got all the minerals that you need, you can feed this one diet for the rest of the dog's life, and I think, I think that there are big holes in the logic with all of these things, all of these things. We're just finishing off. So for me, the, the question, it's not a question of, of, of why do we feed raw. The question should be, why are we not feeding raw? Because dogs have been eating raw food for the last million years. It's only man and woman came along and started feeding them something that was convenient and easy as they were feeding themselves. And look at the problems that have, that have happened with human health. The more convenient the food, almost invariably, the more detrimental it is to your health. Yeah? And yet, we feed it to our dogs, our beloved dogs. Yeah? When you go to the doctor, imagine taking your children to the doctor and saying, OK, doc, here we go. I've got a bag of child food. I'm going to feed my children on this for the rest of their childhood, okay? Social services would, become, would come through the door within three seconds and you would be arrested, yeah? Even if, in, yeah, in Finland, you'd be arrested, yeah? For child abuse. And yet, with the same logic, if you go to your vet, they'll say, 
here is a, bar, is a bag of dog food. Or they may say, here's a bag of German Shepherd dog food. Here's a bag of Cavalier King Charles. Here's a bag of, sh of, of uh, um, uh, Collie food. Okay? And did you notice that, that on that particular Collie food, the formulation is different in Canada? Okay? Like Collies are different in Canada? Um, so, why do we feed raw food? The answer, it's the wrong question. Why? It, 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 it amazes me that the, the veterinary profession is even asking, why do we feed raw food? So, we, we move on from there.